Hello, and welcome to UPL Insights, a digital media series from UPL, led by our friends, colleagues, and experts across the world. In this series, we bring together leaders in sustainable farming, food systems, and climate resilience to explore the challenges and developments defining the agricultural sector today. We are recording this episode in the built up towards this year's African Green Revolution Forum Global Summit, the biggest annual agriculture event for Africa, which is continuing its mission to transform agriculture. This year, the AGRF Summit will be held in Kenya and explore the theme of pathways to recovery and resilient food systems. So in the lead up of this event, we have been talking to some of the people leading our food system transformation inside and outside of UPL and exploring existing opportunities and priorities alongside our shared commitment to resilience, trade, nourishment, and sustainable productivity. So today's episode looks at the host country for this year's AGRF, Kenya. In Kenya, agriculture plays a vital role in the economy, contributing 26% of the GDP and employing more than 40% of total population. But what is the day-to-day -day reality of farming in Kenya? The sector is actually facing new and established threats. The migration of over 250,000 people from rural to urban centers every year is reducing the size and productivity of the agricultural workforce. And at the same time, the productivity of cropland itself is facing challenges from changing climate patterns on one hand and threats like locust and fall armyworm on the other. So the challenge here is how to ensure a sustainable Kenya's agricultural sector that is not only able to thrive, but able to do so sustainably under growing external pressures, making the most of that potential for food and cash crops, building on the existing widespread production of tea and coffee to bring new cultivation of flowers, vegetables, and fruits. This is the challenge UPL's work in Kenya is addressing head on. For the last two decades, UPL has been working closely with Kenya's food system, introducing high quality technical inputs like biosolutions to improve the quality, the productivity, and the resilience of farms and farmers through the Pronutiva program. So to discuss this very exciting topic again, I'm joined by Shani Srivastava, who is the head of East Africa and Middle East at UPL and by Catherine, Catherine Gatshui, Digital Marketing Manager for UPL Kenya. So welcome to both of you. And to begin with, I would like to ask you, Shani, to give us a quick overview of uh, some of the main challenges that farmers are facing today in Kenya. Uh, thank you, Florent. Uh, uh, glad to be here. Uh, I think, you know, no, you know, we all know that uh, some of the traditional challenges uh, any part of the world, any, any, uh, every part of the world farmers, uh, generally are smallholders uh, faces, you know, which is more to the emerging disease, uh, insect pests, and also uh, weeds. Uh, in Kenya, especially, we talk about the smallholder growers. I think, uh, you know, the recent, I think, climate change, uh, which, is, which is there, I think, and we have experienced a bit this year. Uh, I think this is going to be a real, real challenge for the farmer. And, and as a UPL, how do we really make farmers resilient uh, but with all the changes? So I think uh, that something we have to, we have to, we have to work uh, and we have to ensure that how do we really kind of uh, make farmers successful uh, in, in actually, uh, you know, getting the, getting the final produce, uh, you know, having all these challenges. So Catherine, can you tell us a bit about the current portfolio of biosolutions that UPL is offering in Kenya and what the Pronutiva approach has changed? Thank you so much, Florin. Uh, in Kenya, uh, the portfolio, our portfolio, we are offering a sustainable uh, portfolio, solution portfolio, whereby we, inclusive, we include different uh, solutions, that is from planting 
all the way to the harvesting stage of the, of the farmer. This is why by in, in that portfolio, we make sure that we include the crop protection, the biosolution, and the nutrition of, of, of it as well. So farmers at least to make sure that the farmers get the value for their money they have spent in purchasing these products. So that's why the Pronutiva comes in handy for them because at least the farmer is able to prepare first hand during every season before they plant their crops. They're able to know this is the range of products they require in that planting season or in that whole season of every every crop that they are they're going to do in that particular season. That sounds great. Uh, so it's like a, an integrated offer that you're describing uh, me. And um, can you tell us a bit of uh, some of the results that you have seen on the field with this uh, input package and, and, and especially with the Pronutiva program? This, this has helped her self class to get good testimonials from the farmer, whereby apart from just planning fast hard, they're also be, they're able to project the kind of sales they'll yeah, the kind of yields they'll get. Like I said, in most majority of our small scale farmers in the country, they are more, uh, I'd say they are more resort oriented. In this case, results being yield oriented. And we have seen actually uh, increase in their yields, especially on potatoes. Thereby it's one of the major crops in the country. Uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the instances where farmers have used our, our Pronutiva program, we have seen an increase of yield from whereby a farmer was getting like two bags in a piece, in an acre of land and also increasing it to around 10 bags. This means uh, the Pronutiva program is really working to our farmers. And it, the beauty about it is that it is incorporating all the farmers. That is being, be it the small scale farmers, medium scale farmers and large scale farmers. So we're seeing it as a, as a good, uh, once it has been adopted in all areas, it will be a game changer, especially in the potato potato farming and maize farming in the country, which are our main step of food in the country. So, Shani, you mentioned, uh, of course, about climate change and how it affected the lives of uh, smallholder farmers uh, in Kenya. Uh, and I know you've also introduced a, a very promising technology called Ziba in Kenya, which is a, a climate smart technology. Can you tell us a bit uh, how is this contributing to, to your offer and how is this changing the game for Kenyan farmers? Uh, thank you, Florent. Uh, I think Jiva, Jiva is actually uh, a very interesting technology and we also uh, call it Rion in, in Kenya uh, when we are taking this to the farmer. And I think this is something, uh, a cornerstone of our, our whole pony Jiva package. Uh, because what we are trying to do here is that how do we really make, make sure that we are able to, you know, uh, you know, give a, a, a foundational support to the, to the crop because the main challenge is that soil has a, in its own ability to hold the water. It, you know, how do we really make water stay there? You know, the only way to do is that by deep irrigations, improving the efficiency of irrigations, but there has not been, there has been no any other technology around. And this is a very interesting technology, which is, you know, uh, biodegradable, corn starch based patented technology, which when you, and we apply there uh, at the root gene, it, it just stays there. Uh, it, it absorbs the extra water uh, when it goes above the fill capacity. And then it gives, give it back to the plant when there's a moisture stress. Uh, and, and, and with that, it actually, it also, uh, you know, bring, absorb all the extra, you know, nutrition out there. So it just also improves the nitrogen that is in use efficiency. We have a biozyme which supports the fruiting and, and the you know, uh, uh, flowering and fruit setting. We have a faultron which helps in the vegetative growth. Uh, so, so when it actually uh, bring this, this Jiba along with our biostimulant technology, we see amazing things happening with the, with the, with the, with the, with the plant. It's actually a very complimentary offer that, that you, are, you are bringing uh, to the market. And, and I'm sure this will be of big interest for uh, the debates uh, during the AGRF uh, forum, because you're, you're bringing concrete solutions to some of the uh, acute pain points uh, that the farmers are facing. And uh, these are actually sustainable technologies that, uh, that are bringing a clear, a clear uh, change and in innovation uh, to the food system. Um, so Catherine, if you, uh, if you will, uh, can we talk a bit about maize, which is also a key crop for, for Kenyan farmers? Of course, yes. Uh, 
everywhere in the world, we all need to take safe food. Safety is the key in anything that we do, be it in consuming our food, using the product, safety is key. That's why Afla Safe comes to address the safety, especially in the consumption of, of the meat. It, like I said, it is one of the staple food of our, it is the staple food in our, in our country. So Afla Safe sees to it that it addresses that challenge, making sure that the farmers are able to get the best, the best quality of the food and the food that they are consuming, being made and milled or boiled or cooked or as it is, it is safe for them. For them. So Afra Safe becomes uh, makes make, makes sure that uh, the food that is consumed by the by the farmers is safe to them. One of the I'd say uh, and also uh, most of our farmers, I'd say especially the small scale uh, farmers, they are more of uh, quantity oriented. If I would put it like that. They want to use a product and see the results in terms of yield. So, uh, and whereby, as you can see, uh, Aflasave comes to address the issue of quality rather than the quantity. So it becomes quite a challenge to convince the farmers the importance of the Aflasave, uh, making sure that they understand for the importance of having that quality food. And you know, aflatoxin, sometimes you might see clean, clean um, maize, but you're not able to see, sometimes you're not able to see the aflatoxins with your naked eyes, you need a help of an aid for you to see, to be able to see the aflatoxin. So it becomes, uh, it becomes hard for us to, con for you to convince a farmer that you need to use the aflacid to address the issue of safety. Because sometimes you might not be able to see it in there in your naked eyes, but it is still there. We cannot ignore the presence of it. So it becomes a challenge. But uh, as I said, uh, aflacid is one of the key one of the key products that addresses the food, uh, the food safety in the country. For collagen, it is, it is one of my favorite, I'd say one of my favorite technology that we have in the country because it is 100% bio-based. Bio, bio Meaning we are not able to address, you, you're not going to be worried about the, uh, the pre-harvest intervals of it when you use it, unlike the other conventional products that are in the market for the control of uh, fall armyworm. So with collagen, it is one thing that you are assured that even if uh, you apply it in a week time or in this time, you are assured that there will be no residues in your produce. So many because it is 100% bio-based. And also another thing, it is, it is not harmful to the beneficial. So it also protects our environment as well. It, all of us need also to coexist with everything that is within us. So many, it is addressing the, the challenge of the farmer and as well, conserving our, our environment as well. Uh, the only challenge that you see with, uh, with collagen, I would not say it as a challenge per se, it is specific to insta stages. So meaning that the farmers need to make sure that they apply it at the right stage for them to get the best out of it, to get the best results out of the, out of the, out of the product. And that is what um, our team in the country are really working hard to make sure that the farmers understand the right stage to apply the, uh, the product on, yes. Thank you so much, uh, Catherine. So we've talked about so many technologies, uh, Foligen, Ziba, Aflasave, uh, Foltron. Uh, Shani, do you have more innovations uh, like this in the pipeline that, that will, uh, at the same time, improve the livelihood of farmers, but also uh, improve the quality of food, uh, protect the ecosystem and uh, overall improve the food systems. This is so exciting. Yeah, I think, Florent, I think we are, we are excited. I think uh, I will say that, uh, you know, what we have done is just, uh, you know, the we have just taken the first, just the first step. And, and I think uh, we are going to uh, unleash the whole technology, I will say that uh, under the two platform. And I think uh, one of the platform, my colleague, uh, Catherine spoke in detail, uh, which is Pronitiva. And she also spoke about, uh, you know, how are we really integrating the integrating synthetic, uh, you know, chemicals, uh, you know, the conventional, uh, you know, uh, technologies, uh, and then also bringing, uh, you know, the bio solutions together. And the objective is to really, uh, you know, how do we really ensure food safety, food safety and food security goes hand in hand. And I think protein pro nitiva is the, is the answer of that challenge, which world are facing today. Uh, and, and then we, we are able to do that. And I think at some at some level, we are also able to improve the yield significantly, and I, you know, that that's really amazing. Uh, and 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 we are making, you know, sure. 
a chances for a farmer to grow a successful crop, the probability becomes really, really high. And at, you know, even if he has certain you know, conditions, he's able to manage that and make them more resilient. So that's actually prony device is, is we are going to do about. And I think uh, tomato, potato, we are doing very successfully today. And, and I think next year you will see that maize is in a very, very important crop for us. And I think we are going to really unleash our whole point of technology next year with Polygen, with, with your, uh, uh, you know, Afla, Afla say, which is already there. Uh, that's something we are going to focus on. Now we have a very interesting platform, which we call NPP, Natural Plant Protections. And I think this is something we are, we are now working. And under that, we are working on a new technology called Kixona, which is a bionimeticide, uh, Tinto, uh, and a couple of other, uh, Technology which is already there in the country, like Biozyme, which is helping you know, all, you know a grower like coffee growers, tea growers, uh, tomato growers. Uh, you know, I also spoke about those technology. I think those technology are, are, are with the new technology going to come under the natural plant protection. So I think exciting time for 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 a, for a Kenyan growers, I believe. And I think uh, these two, two platform will 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 serve uh, you know. Uh, the, the overall, the, all the Kenyan farmers, uh, you know, depending on the need, uh, you know, uh, with the, uh, depending on, on whatever the needs are, like, you know, if somebody is looking for a complete organic uh, cultivations, we have a natural plant protections to help them. And, uh, and for anybody, a uh, farmer who wants to improve the yield quality, Pony device the answer for that. So yeah, so we are quite excited about it. Thanks, Floyd. Thank you so much, uh, Shani and Catherine, for taking us through these uh, Kenyan innovations in, in your portfolio. And uh, we're so glad that uh, we could uh, shed the light on Kenya, which is uh, uh, AGRF host country for this year, and uh, illustrate how you are paving the way for uh, UPS leadership uh, in uh, biosolution development uh, on the African continent. So thank you so much. Thanks for watching. You can uh, subscribe to UPL channel on YouTube and follow the full UPL Insight series. You can also follow UPL during AGRF week on the platform. And uh, we hope to see you uh, on the next episode. Bye-bye.